Hi folks. Sorry I look like a wild man. Hadn't had a haircut in months. I'll be glad when you go places during COVID. Anyway, today we're going to put the head back on. I always wanted to be a surgeon. I know I could do brain surgery, but haven't ever found anybody to let me practice on them. Except this old Axelson here. I've worked my tail off getting it ready and without taking everything completely out of the case, this is as good as it's going to get. I've run seven gallons of diesel through it. Uh, the pumping lines are all clear. The clutch line up here is spewing stuff. And as you'll see, I had a geyser of diesel coming out at one time. But she's as clean as I'm able to get it right now. In a perfect world, I take everything out, blast the inside of the cavity, and repaint the inside of this. I did the top because I could get to it. And I've sucked and chipped and sprayed a sealer on everything else I could get to. I've cleaned out the sumps. Cleaned off the gears as best I can. And this is the way it's going to be for now. Later on, if I find out that the table works and everything's down there, it's good, the saddle's okay, I may come back to it, but probably never will. Let me let you look inside. See what about 10 hours of scrubbing with pads and toothbrushes and multiple, multiple rags have done. Well, first off, I'm going to put oil in it today. I'm going to put three gallons of oil and it should come up to that line there. This is the oil drip window. It's got some nice switches on it. And this is what the inside of the case looks like now. I've gotten all the rust I can off got a coating of diesel still on it kind of hazy looking <laughs> this is the clutch assembly and it also controls the brake uh, forward and reverse are up here it's got a shaft that goes all the way down and comes out down here and transverses to the other side where it goes out to the apron this is where the, uh, uh, sorry you can't see down in there very good. I shielded the bearings as best I can. There's a bearing here. Put a rag around it. And there's a bearing in here and here and there's lots of bearings but it's definitely an improvement I don't know if you can see down in there the very bottoms of the oil pickup tube and I put some magnets around there thanks to Wayne's suggestion and uh, this assembly right here is the oil pump And it pumps it into this chamber, which is inside is a, uh, a regular uh, filter. So we are ready to go. All the pigtails coming out. If you haven't seen it, we spent two days getting all the wiring leads. All this was sheared off and I was left with wires about this long. But... Uh, Got her on a starter now. This works out. I'll clean up all these gears down here. It's the old oil window that was in there. A little bit of difference, huh? Plus it was uh, painted over. Before we start running it, I'm going to put some oil in the saddle. It was completely empty. Put a new oil window in it. It was painted over also. 
Want to drop a hole in this machine when I got it. But we're getting there. So let me put you up on a stand and I'm going to go get some oil and we'll start putting it in there. If you're ever replacing your uh, oil windows, pick, your up, pick yourself up one of these from the auto parts store. They can reach in there and hook into it. You got to break the glass on them, but the easiest way I've ever found to change them. Luckily, all my machines use basically the same two oils. And I just go to the Chevron dealer here in town, the bulk fuel sales, and buy, buy the drum or the five gallons. I'm going to make a mess if I do it that way. Put the lid back on it. Not as young as he used to be. that wiped off. <clears throat> this is a Chevron Rando HD ISO 68. <sighs> oil! Have some oil! Stuff you haven't had in a long time. Kind of watching the oil level window over here. When you're putting in fresh oil, you got to be careful because it's clear. It's already picked up to the oil level and it's not clear anymore. Must have washed some of the old oil out, but uh, I bet that's the diesel that was left in. Got everything out as much as I could. Now, it's going to be an initial oil charge. I'm going to put a little bit more in there because the filter housing isn't full yet. And it likes it. You see it kind of picked up a tinge of brown. I'd imagine that's a little bit of residual diesel flowing in there. That's up to the line. But before we go any farther, I want to put some oil down into this area. Into this cup and fill this reservoir up. Now this Axelson saddle has an oil pump in it also. It's got some valves and stuff, and frankly, Don talked me into taking this thing apart. So, I put a hole in it now, only as a precaution for when we run the head. And it kind of goes in there. I don't want to make a mess, so I just brought a pump in here. And now, watch this window. See when oil starts coming up. It's got some other oil imports that you 
put oil into, but I'm not going to be operating the clutches or anything just yet. I want to clean the waves off. Heard from a lot of people that really love Axelson lays. I have to admit, before I bought my first one, I really didn't know much about them. Bought it from a guy up in Dallas, hauled it home, moved it into the little room there. I had to tear out the wall so we could get it in. And it had a piece of tool steel in it on the, for a tool. And I chucked up a piece of unknown metal in it. Made the prettiest, nicest cut you ever saw. I think from that moment on I was in love. Things like the hand wheel. Yeah, it's got uh, two gears starting to see oil come up now. You can go slow or fast on the quill coming in and out. And, and I prefer it on the front, not on the back like a regular tailstock. I gotta slow down. It comes up in here, if you pump too much, it'll drip out. That's the most oil that's been in there in a long time. I think I will put a little pearl on this. Just dirty as all get out. But it's like I need to buy another one of the oil pumpers from H&W. This has got dirt fittings on here. here got a pull in there I'm gonna reach in here and put some in you see over here put some in on these gears just for I think we're ready to put on the head. What's supposed to be under here is a felt washer that I'm going to have to make. I thought it fit in that pocket and it'd be very hard to put in. Then I, looking at the plans, I saw that this was just a ring that was bolted on top. So I can put the head on first, then pack the washer, felt washer around it. will be good.
It even looks like a, a rubber washer in there. Huh. Check that out. Like some kind of washer in here. Maybe that's all it's needed. Parts of it feel hard and parts of it are soft. I don't understand that. Pretty tight fit. I might leave the washer off for right now. I'll show you in a minute what we're doing. But now I want to get this on top. Go past that clip. Be careful. Now that, that picks it up too much on that end, so we need to slide it forward. That's pretty level. I've already gone over this flange with some acetone. I spilled a little oil right there though.
Okay. Acetone's great because it goes on quick, dries quick, and doesn't leave a residue. There it is. It's hiding down there. Don't want to be a part of an actress. You're going to be. This is Permatex Ultra Black Advanced Oil Resistant Gasket Maker. It looked like the head had some silicone on it before, just plain silicone. That doesn't ever stick very well. What I'm going to do is put a bead of it on here, set the head down, and go to town. Cover. Okay. The instructions for this sealant say to finger tighten your bolts 
and then come back in an hour and torque them down to specs. Well, I haven't ever seen any specs on an Axelson lathe, so I have no idea. So I'm just going to use my judgment. I'm also going to leave it hooked up to this engine hoist for about an hour so that the full weight doesn't press it all out. To you paint, uh, get them cleaned off, you can see where they braze this handle here. Because it almost always have broken handles on. Last video I asked people what they thought was in that. I didn't receive a single guess. As soon as I get this back on, I'll go pour out that fluid. It just happens to be PB Blaster. Hey Brian, I'm supporting your company. I bought a John Deere magnetic tray. Probably made in the same place that all of the Northern Tool and Harbor Freight ones are, but I try. Glad they put this on here. This would be hard to line up and get through that tight fitting hole. You couldn't take it off. Just made it a snap. Helping you out, Brian. Got a John Deere magnetic tray. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go pour this out. It's been in this bucket about four and a half months. I've been letting it soak. And then last week I put it in my ultrasonic for about an hour. And now we get to see what's coming out of the box or the bottle. The jug, the jar, something. I'll be back. Ta-da! Handles. Lots of handles. They don't look any better. Well, maybe a little. These are handles that screw in all over the place. Just like this. And what happens is they've got these little holes right here and there's a spring plunger that goes into these holes and when you pull this back it pulls the tip out and you can change it locks them in place well with the exception of one every single piece on this lathe was locked up and i could not get it to turn or pull out and so, PB Blaster has been trying to help me. And to no avail. Ugh. Come on, Mr. Camera. Focus on this. This sleeve goes around this barrel here and it is hard stuck. So what do you do? If I put it on this and take a hammer and start pulling and all that, I'm going to break that cast iron lever. This isn't going to work. So, what I'm about to do
is make a, a fitting. This is the die that'll fit onto that thread. And basically I'm going to take a piece of aluminum, I guess, and thread this. I've got a tap to where it screws on like this. This piece is going to be solid and then I'm going to put in a grease hurt on this end. And then I'm going to try with a grease gun to pump it full and see if I can break it loose that way. Barring that, I could screw it onto this and take a, take a punch and go down inside there and hit the sides of that sleeve. But sure enough, if I do that, it's probably going to bend it enough to make it where it won't work. What would you guys do? I could probably heat this outside a little bit and maybe get it that way, but I want them to work smooth when I'm through, so I don't want to distort them. So I think the first thing we're going to do is make that part, see what happens. Obviously, PB Blaster in four and a half months didn't do a thing for it. What do you want to do now? I've got an hour to kill. Don's not here to fight with, so. <sighs> My hands did hurt, I'd peen some, but it won't happen tonight. Can't put the handle on, that's in the way. Can't clean those gears because that's in the way. Maybe I could find an oiler and oil some of these parts. I'll go try that. I'll be back. I guess while we're waiting, I can show you what came in on the Keymaster. This man uses some really thick bubble wrap. I love that. These are all the parts for the power feed for a D1 Toolmaster. A man bought a head and it was shipped to him, it was damaged, and uh, he parted it out. His loss was our gain in that I was able to buy all the parts almost for that head over there from his machine and they don't look all worn out that's a nicer handle than the one I've got on this one Serviceable. That chest kind of scored, but no, it's just dirt. accessories and the gear head. A little 
oil window there. Can't see in. In addition to the downfeed parts, I was also able to buy a two horsepower motor down here on the ground. And it's fitted with the very cheese. And I was able to buy the front sheaf for around the spindle. Oh, got to sit down. Right now I've got the, the head off of the D1 Cincinnati Toolmaster. And I've just about decided to sell it. The bottom of the machine is really good. The ways look like they've never been used. The top part would have been fine except for the motor spindle has been galled up by putting the wrong screw in the uh, shaft. It was just sliding up and down. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I think this two horsepower motor will bolt right up there. It's got a horse and a half on it now, but from everything I see, the pulleys are exactly the same. The uh, parts catalog for it, or parts house that still sells this stuff, wants exactly the same amount of money for these pulleys as the others. That was uh, $16,000. And Tomorrow, Don's going to come over, and we're going to put this bad boy together. One man wanted to buy it from me just the way it was so he could learn how to put it all together. But I want to at least make sure it's usable. You know, these old machines, they are war. They're brought brand new. You have to sneak up on tolerances and things like that. But I bought a set of tooling for it. Or I bought nine tool holders. Got a whole new parts for the head, and hopefully I'm going to be getting parts for the other side. So that's a lot of spare parts that cost a lot of money if you buy them from the, the, the dealer. So we'll see. What do you want to do now? Got 20 more minutes. I want that blue gone so bad. <laughs> but some people may like it. I prefer machine gray myself. Alexa, what time is it? It's 6.56 p.m. Have a good evening. Time to go. <laughs> Let's get this show on the road. Where do you guys want to sit? I think this will be good. Sorry. I have to talk to you if Don's not here. All right, let's pull you off.
just going to put this on temporarily because it needs to be oh, great. There we go. Now this is a plug that you use to fill it and this over here is where you could get in to adjust the pressure on the clutch. What do you say we turn it on? It's a 10 horsepower rotary phase converter. Let's see. Watch the oil level down here. Start to suck down. to the bottom of the input and there may not be enough in there. It's a good sign. The oil pump's pumping it around. Actually, that one's not going to allow me to put the funnel in. at the fill mark.
you're looking at right now is a little window like this. It's clear. I like the fill levels that have a hole in the top and the bottom and a back so you can uh, see the level against the back like a mirror. These clear ones just let you see all the way through. Uh, as you watch in here, there's a little drip of oil every once in a while. I'm going to turn it on. When you engage it, in the back, that flashing you see is the bull gear. And right in front of it is a stream of oil. That's what you look for. Make sure you're getting oil pressure in this thing. And as you release it, that little tube quits dripping so much. I say it quits dripping. Come on, stop, there you go. On this machine, the clutch is moved over to engage it and the oil pump comes but the oil pressure is also used as the brake the brake when you pull the handle with the clutch mechanically engages the, the clutch pack but when you put it to the uh, neutral position the oil activates the brake Let's see how fast it stops and I think the oil is being diverted to the brake system and that's why you don't see as much flow over here when you put it in gear, the flow comes on, increases the oil in going over all the gears. There's quite a bit of pressure in there. 